Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. We have some announcements. Some are on the back of your bulletin. Um, we need oh, candy. We have cut down the trunk or treats that we're doing. We're only doing one trunk or treat down at the community center on the 24th. But we need candy for that. And last year we had over 200 kids, so um, that's really the place to be on that night, apparently. And also we need candy for the parade so that we can throw candy um, out from the float. Um, so we need candy. Uh, Wednesday nights we're having, Wednesday, oh, this is different. Wednesday night there's gonna be a Bible study in October at 6.30 and it's gonna be on Wednesday evenings. Um, there's gonna be um, Bible study and um, hymn singing and also, uh, as I understand it, refreshments. Um, come back to that one. We're going to have a wiener roast on the tw October 12th at 6 o'clock in the evening. And we're going to have the Sunday school where somebody will provide, but we already have hot dogs. We'll get drinks and s'more makings and, of course, the plates and the napkins and everything that. So if anybody wants to bring a covered dish, you're welcome to do that. Also, we're having a chicken and biscuit dinner and a bake sale on the 19th of October. It will run from 4 to 7 p.m. It's going to be $12, $12 per adult, $10 for children under 6, no, under 10, and children under 6 are free. Choir practice on Tuesdays at 6 p.m., then a regular Bible study in the mornings at 10 o'clock on Wednesdays, and we're starting a new study this week of Leviticus. Um, some of us have done that one already before, and they really enjoyed it, so we're doing it again, and um, we've gotten a book. It looks really interesting, so if you're interested in coming, this would be a good week to start that or start up. Also, we have Coffee Club on Thursdays at 10 here at Meadowlands. Um, Angel Ridge Collection. They're, they will take all light used towels, blankets, toys, dog and cat treats, or snacks. Um, and you can bring those in at any time. Also, the coat collection where the coats are going to premiere. Some have already gone. If you still have coats you want to bring in, you can still bring them in. Um, and as always, we have our hearing assistive devices. Jess Kirk doesn't have his hearing thing on. <laughs> um, and there is going to be a rummage sale on October 4th and 5th. It's going to be two days now. That's a Friday and a Saturday from 9 to 11. I'm sorry, 9 to 1. Um, you can bring in your items now. No electronics. There, I'm going to give you a rummage sale set up if you can help even, even for a little bit with any of this that's going to go on, um, you'll be welcome. The, um, they're going to set up on Monday, the 23rd of September, from 9 until 11, and then on Saturday, September 28th, from 9 until 11. And if need be, then there'll be another set up on Monday, September 30th, from 9 to 11. Um, the rummage sale will be October 4th and 5th, from 9 to 1. Please consider helping on any of those days, if even for a half an hour. And then down at the bottom it says, if you have any items for the rummage sale and cannot get the items to the church, see Ruth. Pickups are available even for larger items. Remember, no electronics. Clean and working items, please. <laughs> October's a busy month. Anybody else have any announcements? Jess? There are flyers in the back for rummage sale, the Bible study, and the chicken and biscuit dinner. Anyone can hang them up anywhere. They're in the back. Do you all hear that? Flyers in the back for all of those things that we told you about. Chicken and biscuit, um, Bible study, rummage sale. If you have any place where you can hang up a flyer to advertise those events, please take them. Anybody else? Okay. If not, then let's be in an attitude of prayer during the praises.
Now, if you would join me with the, for the call to worship found in your bulletin. Happy are those who follow paths of righteousness. We take delight in the wisdom of God. Happy are those who reach out to those in need. We find delight in the love of God. Happy are those who set aside envy. We draw delight in the selfishness of God. Our first hymn is Ye Servants of God on page 181 in the hymnal.
She seeks wool and flax and works with willing hands. She is like the ships of the merchant. She brings her food from far away. She rises while it is still night and provides food for her household and tasks for her servant girls. She considers a field and buys it. With the fruit of her hands, she plants a vineyard. She girds herself with strength and makes her arms strong. She perceives that her merchandise is profitable. Her lamp does not go out at night. She puts her hands on the distaff, and her hands hold the spindle. She opens her hand to the poor, and reaches out her hands to the needy. She is not afraid for her household when it snows, for all her household are clothed in crimson. She makes herself coverings. Her clothing is fine linen and purple. Her husband is known in the city gates, taking his seat among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them. She supplies the merchant with sashes. Strength and dignity are her clothing, and she laughs at the time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom, and the teachings of kindness is on her tongue. She looks well to the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her happy. Her husband, too, and he praises her. Many people have done excellently, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her a share in the fruit of her hands and let her works praise her in the city gates. And this is our first reading for this morning. This is the time in our service where we have an opportunity <coughs> to be able to give back a small portion of what the Lord has graciously given unto us. May I please have an usher. <laughs>
Yep. See, she's being truthful. Give me time, I'll get this right. I, I try to stay honest, and when anybody gives me money, and I always have envelopes in my body, and I, if somebody hands me money, I stick it in there, seal it up, and write what it is, just like you read. That was my handwriting. I know, it's horrible. It's not horrible, it's just a little hard to read, because I'm not that good at reading cursive, but I'm not that good at reading That's okay. But my handwriting was better? Okay, I, too bad my, um, so I don't know where my second grade teacher is. Because all I, or any of my teachers from second grade up, because I don't know if you guys still have the subject or not. Can, do you guys still have handwriting? We have writing. <coughs> Pardon? Writing. Writing? Okay. Yeah. So we had that class, and because of how bad my writing is, and this is even worse than back then. I only got D's because oh my. yeah, because I had the worst penmanship. Shh. Well, at least it's not an F. Well, at least it's not an F. Okay, I like that. I don't like methods, <laughs> but yeah, that that was a hard grade. That was the grade that always kept me off the honor roll. Thank you. I'm glad I had good handwriting research. Well, great. Maybe great minds think alike.
joys, our concerns, what the Lord's been doing in our lives this past week, are there those that we need to lift up? Jess. My cousin Bill has an infection in his leg, um, a mystery, but it, and he's home from the hospital. He was in for about a week, um, but he has to go back to the hospital every day to get the antibiotics, so he needs prayers um, for the infection. Okay. Any others? Tina. Uh, Jeanette has to move her sister tomorrow to Auburn. I also wanted to say thank you to everybody that sent cards or called or texts and those that came up at my mom's memorial last weekend. I really appreciate it. So is my family. Any other? Karen. My sister Joni is going to Alabama now and she should be coming home this week. Any others? Not seeing any, then let us go into the Lord and pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we are able to gather together and to share our joys and concerns with one another, knowing that that is the best place we can place them. Lord, we pray for all those whose names we have listed this morning. You've heard the needs. We ask that they be granted especially those who are dealing with illnesses and surgeries and recovery from them. We pray for those who have the unfortunate position of needing to place individuals into homes. We just ask that you give the strength and courage to those who need it, and the understanding of the situation to all those involved. And Lord, we pray for all those who are in our hearts and our minds that we just did not verbally mention. Give them, may, may the needs that have been lifted up silently be granted as well. We pray all this, praying the prayer that your son taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. 
to be turning the hymnal to number 354. Peace for those who make peace. 
Those conflicts and disputes among you, where do they come from? Do they not come from your cravings that are at war within you? You want something and do not have it, so you commit murder, and you covet something and cannot obtain it, so you engage in disputes and conflicts. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly in order to spend what you must get on your pleasure, pleasures. May God add his blessing to the reading and hearing of his holy word. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we are able to come and to he be able to hear your word, read your word, and live it. And now, Lord, that through the words that have, that have been prepared, that through them or in spite of them, your will will be made known. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Now I know over the years that I've mentioned that I've gone to a private Christian high school. And this morning's scripture was a favorite among my classmates, especially the guys. Why? Because they would use this passage as an excuse not to ask a girl out. That they would say that she didn't hold up to the woman of Proverbs 31. You also have to know that we were taught you don't just date to date, you only date those with the qualities of a future mate. That's how, we, that's how it was where I grew up. And most of the girls hated this passage because they thought it meant that they would have to be a slave to whomever they would marry. I grew up with a different theory on this passage. And that theory was is that this is the goal of a woman should work towards, not one to make her a slave to a man but earn her honor for what she does for her family. One of equal respect from her partner and love from her children. In most societies, women are placed into two stereotypes, a seductress or a servant. Proverbs 31 steps outside of these stereotypes, giving insight into what it means to be a woman. This isn't so much a line about a woman being subject to a man, either as his servant or seductress. It's a picture of a person who is intelligent, confident, respected, trustworthy, and creative. A person who is involved in the community, engaged in humanitarian work, and willing to take the initiative. Growing up, there was always the understanding that somewhere Within the worn and cold work lines, a marriage would take place. For many years, it couldn't happen because they all were boys or they were all girls. When it came down to the children of my grandparents, it started to look promising. There was my Uncle John, who was in the Navy, and my dad took care of his two sons, um, Mike and Jack. So much so that I never really called them cousins, I called them more my brothers. And then, uh, um, Warren and Karen had a daughter named Patty. She, the, the two boys, Mike and Jack, were considered too old for her. And then when my parents had my brother Scott, well, Patty was too old for him. But when David came around, there was still hope that a match might happen. And when I came into the family, it was a done deal. With only six, six months separating the two of us, he was born December 4th, 1969, and I was born June 4th, 1970. Families were happy. I thought it was perfect. All those except me and David. We thought we got the raw deal. We were told that we would never have to go through those so-called dating rituals that most teenagers would go through. That's true. We grew, grew up knowing that someday we were to get married, 
We'd spent every Christmas together when his family came back to Ohio to visit his grandparents. Since I can remember, I had worn a gold pinky ring on my right hand with a large letter M. And the way the script was, is that if you flipped it over, it became a W. I also was taught what he liked to eat, what he didn't, what he did in his spare time. And as I grew older, I even learned how to make those dishes. I was taught how to cook clean, how to take care of a household. While I was learning all this, he was being schooled in my likes and dislikes. How he should take care of his wife when the time came for us to be married. He was learning how to make a household budget. As time came near for us to graduate high school, and we were deciding on careers for our future, he wanted to become an architect, and I, a nurse. We tried to figure out if our families would allow us to go to college first before we got married or not. So we took matters into our own hands. Before you panic, no, we did not get married. Don't panic. But David was home for Christmas. He was a senior graduating in May, and I was a junior. And as David was leaving to go back home, he turned around in the airport on the corridor to his plane and asked me to marry him. Before I could answer, the flight attendant hurried him into the plane. And when he called a few days later, I answered him, I guess so. But that's as far as it ever got. Because two weeks later, when he was coming home from a ski, act, a ski trip, Sorry, this still, still feels fresh. A drunk driver hit his car, and he died when his car flipped and landed in the ditch on the side of the road. Some people would say I was trained to be a servant to him. The way in which both our families saw to our upbringings, it was a way that we both could respect one another and honor each other. We were to be each other's equals. My grandmother Culver always told me why God took the rib from Adam when he created the helpmate. It was so that she would never be above him nor below him, but right as his equal. In a society that has two pictures of women, what image what do you assume for yourself? The glamorous seductress or the dingy servant? The latter of those identifies, fulfills a sense of responsibility and morality. The former fulfills a sense of fun and excitement. As a man, what beauty you have, you develop, what have you developed? What view have you developed of a woman? And women as objects to satisfy you or a woman subjected to serve you? Those are the two stereotypes and you're stuck with making a choice between them. But here in Proverbs 31, we've been given a, a third choice. Here a woman is not only intelligent, creative, exciting, responsible, kind, and moral. Suddenly, this image frees you. If you are a woman, it frees you to be something you didn't think possible. And if you are a man, it frees you to relate to women as individuals of enormous worth and equality, and with dignity. This isn't a sermon about women's lib, either for it or against it, it isn't part of a debate on the role of women in society. It's a declaration of good news about who we all are. One of the difficulties in living in that society that puts us into roles, and sometimes the roles just don't fit. If you take back a few years, quite a few years now in our society, I wouldn't be allowed to stand up here and speak to you on a Sunday morning. 
Women were not allowed. That's changed. I look at Tammy, she's a lawyer. That sure won't have happened quite a few years ago. And I know quite a few through these years. I can say the women here of this church are strong individuals, quite imaginative, creative, smart as heck as I can tell you, and they deserve our respect. And I also know you gentlemen, well, <laughs> most of you, still getting to know one, but most of you I know, you treat us with respect. You give us our dignity. And that, I believe, is because we all know Jesus. Because we don't have to fit into the roles that society says are what is what for us. The Christian message becomes good news. It provides us with a fresh insight and sense of identity. Each one of us looked at as, can be looked at as unique individuals, a person created by God. Each of us is seen as being created in love and for love. Each of us is seen as a personality who isn't identified by <coughs> mistakes, our sins, or, or other people's ideas and wishes and fantasies, but by God's love for us, a free person to respond to his created word to us. The gospel shatters the stereotypes that confines us to uncomfortable roles. Paul put it in these famous words, in Christ's faith, there can be no division into Jews and non-Jews, slaves and free, male and female. Among us, you are all equal. Galatians 3, 28. And then if you wanted to draw a conclusion, Christ has set us free to live a free life. So take your stand. Never again let anyone put you, put the harness of slavery on you. Chapter 5, verse 1. It's our choice to live a life free in Christ, or one in the chains of slavery that comes with a lifestyle full of sin. To break free from the bonds of slavery, all you have to do is accept Christ. If you have done so, you know the freedom that a life in Christ can give you. If you have not done so, I ask what's standing in your way. If you'd like to know the freedom that life in Christ, the altar is open. You need to bring someone with you if you'd like, or signal to me and I'll come down and talk with you. And we can pray together and start you on that life of freedom with Christ. And let's give him all the honor and glory. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you give us so many different ways to learn about your love and grace for us. You give us so many examples of how to do things differently because of that love. And Lord, we pray for anyone who may not know you or understand what your love is all about. If they are here worshiping with us, they can come down to the altar. If they're worshiping with us online, my phone number is 724-699-4064. You may call it at any time, and I'll be on the other end to listen and to pray with you. Lord, help us to become the disciples that you would have us to be. In your holy name we pray. Amen. 
If you turn in your hymnals to number 438 for our closing hymn. <laughs> Jesus Christ the Son and the communion of the Holy Spirit go forth now and forevermore.